Dear students, now we are going to discuss the architecture of 8279 keyboard display controller. 8279 is a keyboard display controller designed by Intel Corporation for interfacing the keyboard and display devices with a microprocessor. So this is the diagrammatic representation of 8279 for interfacing the keyboard and display with this microprocessor. This is the architecture of 8279 which has four important functional units. The first one is CPU interface control unit. This unit consists of the data buffers, input output control, control and timing registers and then timing and control. So this CPU interface control unit mainly used to control the operation of 8279. Okay. The next one is display section which consists of display address registers, 16 by 8 display ramp, display registers. Okay. Then keyboard section. It has FIFO or sensor ramp status, 8 by 8 FIFO or sensor ramp, keyboard debounce and control and then return. So here keyboard section is having all these four units. Okay. Then the scan counter which is having four scan lines. Okay. So it is used to scan the lines. Okay. The last one is internal data bus which is used to transfer the data, command and status information between the processor and the functional units of this 80 to 79. Okay. So let's discuss each block in detail here. So data bus buffer, it is a tri-state bidirectional 8-bit buffer. It's mainly used to transfer the data between the system bus and then 80 to 79. Okay. So next one is IO control that is input output control unit it is having four input control signals from the processor okay so read bar write bar cs bar and a0 so here a0 is nothing but the address line from the processor cs bar means chip select okay so these four signals are used to control the input and output related operations okay for this 8279 Next one is control and timing registers which are mainly used to store the command word status information for controlling the overall operation of this 80 to 79. Timing and control unit which is mainly used to send the control signals to all the functional units of this 80 to 79. Okay. So this is what the CPU interface unit. So next one is keyboard section. The first one is FIFO or sensor ramp status. The status signal is mainly used to track the storage of the RAM location. Okay. So that is what status information. So here 8 by 8 FIFO or sensor RAM is used. So here in case of scanned keyboard mode or strobed input mode, this RAM can be used as FIFO RAM. That is first in first out RAM. In case of Sensor matrix mode, it can be used as a sensor RAM, okay. So next, the same RAM can be used in both the ways, okay. So next, keyboard debounce and control unit is mainly used to scan the return lines for identifying the key closer, okay. So after getting the control from this return lines, it can activate the control keys as well as shift keys, okay. So next one is scan counter it is a 4 bit scan counter which is used to provide the binary count to the display unit okay so next one is display section which is having display address registers 16 by 8 display ram and display registers okay yes. the 16 by 8 display ram is used to store the display codes okay so from there we can get the data to this data bus Display address register, this is mainly used to hold the address of the current data. Okay, so it can be the address of the current byte written or read by the CPU. Okay, as well as it can get the value from the scan counter. Next one is display registers. There are two 4 bit registers used to hold the bit pattern of characters to be displayed on the display device okay so here 
These are the functional units, CPU, interface and control units, scan section, keyboard section and display section. Let's have an overview for the functional units of 80 to 79. The first one is CPU interface control unit which consists of data buffer, input output control, control and timing registers and timing control. Data buffer is a 8-bit bidirectional buffer. It is used to transfer the data, command word, control word and status information between the processor and 80 to 79. Okay. Then the input output control. There are four control signals from the processor used to control the data flow between the processor and 80 to 79. So the signals are A0 that is the address line, read bar, write bar and chip select bar. Here this A0 address line is used to represent what type of information is to be transferred. For example, if A is equal to 0 means it denotes the data. If A is equal to 1 means it defines the command word or the status word. Okay. These three bits are used to select the operation of 80 to 79. If the combination is 0, 1, 0, it can select the operation data from CPU to 80 to 79. If it is 0, 0, 1, it can select the operation data to CPU from 80 to 79. 110. 110 means command word from CPU to 80 to 79. 101. That is status word to CPU from 80 to 79. So, and here one more thing this read bar and write bar both are the active low signals. Active low means whenever it is low, it can be activated. So, here we can say 0. 0 means it is activated. So, data from the CPU can be written on this 80 to 79. You all understand that is what given here 0 once here the read bar is 0 then the read signal is activated that means the CPU can read the data from this 80 to 79. Do you all understand? So the next one is CS bar that is chip select it is an active low chip select signal that means whenever the signal is logic 0 this 80 to 79 is enabled to communicate with the processor and the devices okay. So next one is control and timing registers. These registers are mainly used to store the keyboard and display modes and operating conditions programmed by the processor. So it can store all the keyboard and display command related words. Okay. So next timing and control logic. It consists of the chain of basic timing counters. So the here the first counter is divided by n prescaler. So we can set this prescalar value from 2 to 31. Here it can be programmed to give an internal frequency 100 kilohertz. Next one is scan unit. It has four scan lines SC0 to SC3. It is also known as 4-bit scan counter. Okay. There are two modes available in this. One is encoded mode. Another one is decoded mode. In this encoded mode, it can provide all the binary count values between 000 to 111 with high active outputs. So this can be externally decoded to get the 16 scan lines. Okay. Because we need to have 16 bit lines. Okay. To get the keyboard values as well as display codes. Okay. So here display can use all the 16 scan lines to interface with 7 segment display. Keyboard can use only 8 scan lines. Actually it is having 4 lines. We can decode into 16 scan lines from that we can use all the 16 lines for the 7 segment display only 8 for this keyboard okay so next one is decoded mode this decoded mode the internal decoder is used to decode the least significant two bits of the scan lines and provides four active low outputs so that is very important okay so here it can provide the scan lines from 0 to 1111 but here it can provide only 4 active low outputs that is 1101, 1101, These 4 output lines can be directly used to interface with 4 digit 7 segment display and 8 by 4 matrix keyboard. Do you all understand? So code mode is mainly used to interface with 4 digit 7 segment display. Okay. That is the difference between 
encoded and decoded okay so in encoder external decoder is used but in this decoder internal decoder is used okay so next one is keyboard section it has four units return buffer which is having eight return lines keyboard debounce and control unit fi fo or sensor ram and status register return buffer it has eight return lines rl0 to rl7 used to store the data during each row scan in a scanned keyboard or sensor matrix mode so in stored input mode the data is transferred to fi fo ram okay so there is a two control values during each row it can be used to store the data in a stored input mode the data is transferred into the fi fo ram so next one is keyboard debounce and control it is enabled only for scanned keyboard mode okay it is enabled only for scanned keyboard mode not for that matrix mode okay so in this mode return lines are scanned and looking for key closer if the switch is closed in about 10 milliseconds then the address of that switch along with the shift and control keys is transferred to fi fo ram you all understand so it has to wait for 10 milliseconds till the switch is closed it can transfer that address to the fi fo ram next one is fi fo ram or sensor ram in scanned keyboard and stored input mode it is used as fi fo ram that is each entry is written into successive ram positions and then read in fi fo order that is first in first out order so in scanned keyboard and stored input mode the ram is used as fi fo ram in case of sensor matrix mode it is used as sensor ram okay so next one is ram status the status signal is used to track the storage of fi fo ram whether it is full or empty so it has to maintain the status of the random access memory it is also used to make interrupt request signal as high when fi fo is not empty if this fi fo is having some values then it can initiate that interrupt request to the processor okay it can send that interrupt request to the processor when that ram is not empty so the next one is display section it is having display ram display address register and display registers so here the display ram is mainly used to store the display codes for 16 digits so its size is 16 by 8 okay so it can be directly accessed by the processor that is cpu there are two modes encoded mode and decoded mode in this encoded mode 80 to 79 uses first eight locations for eight digit display but for this decoded mode it uses only first four locations of display ram display address registers this registers are used to hold the address of the byte that is data currently written or read by the cpu and scan the count value the last one is display registers there are two four bit registers a and b are used okay so that means out a and out b okay so these two out registers together used as 8 bit port they hold the bit pattern of the character to be displayed in the display device okay